Hi, everyone. My name is Dashita, and I'm a researcher at the Human Computer Interaction Lab at MIT. My background is in architecture and computer science, and my passion is to build machines that can help designers with creative problem solving. The motivation for my research comes from my personal experience as an architect. I was never the lone creative genius. Being a designer for the last 10 years has made me realize that creative thinking is a social exercise. Every time I struggled with a problem that required a creative solution, that out-of-the-box thinking, I seeked perspectives of those around me. And somehow, their way of looking at the problem differently than me opened up so many avenues of solutions for me. The environments we thrive in, the contexts and cultures we engage with, but most importantly, the people we interact with directly influence our creative abilities. So, when I came to MIT, I started researching on building machines that could be creative partners. I wanted to understand why and how did my interactions with others enabled me to develop creative solutions. As I delved deeper, I realized that creative thinking was not as mysterious as I believed it to be. In fact, each one of us can be creative all the time. Let me show an example. Take a moment and look at this image. What did you just see? More importantly, what did you think? If you were a Beatles fan, you probably thought of their Blackbird song. If you were a mother of a toddler, you probably thought of the nursery rhyme, four and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie. Or if you were a Game of Thrones fan like me, you probably thought of the three-eyed raven. While we all looked at the same thing, we had our own unique ways of looking at the blackbird. And if you were poet Wallace Stevens, you had not one, but 13 different ways of looking at the blackbird. Wallace's poem highlights the most extraordinary ability of human minds, creative thinking by merely able to see different meanings in the same object. And this form of creative thinking is not just evident in poetry and storytelling, but also in visual art. For example, Wallace's poem inspired artist Michael Spafford to create his interpretations of Wallace's poem as paintings. Interestingly, 10 years later, he revisited his own paintings to form new expressions. Our ability to see different meanings in the objects around us and then express these visions across different mediums is what makes us a creative society. Creative thinking is nothing but seeing different meanings that adds value to our knowledge. And sometimes it's revisiting and relooking at our interpretations and forming new meaning. It is as if the world is one giant painting, and we are constantly playing around with it to discover new meanings, discover hidden connections. And this simple idea is powerful, because what it means is that each one of us can be creative as long as we can develop our own unique ways of looking at the world. And this way of looking uniquely at the world is a term that is scientifically called as cognitive diversity. As a visual analogy, consider, for example, you and me were looking at the same object, a prism. Based on how we look at it, where we are looking from, we would form different rules to parse this object. We would form different interpretations of this object, and we would embed different meanings in this object. This is what makes us cognitively diverse from each other. Computationally speaking, cognitive diversity is merely being able to use different perspectives and breaking objects in different components using different rules, and then using different heuristics to form new interpretations. So if we are all cognitively diverse from each other, how does it affect our creative ability? This brings me to the second most extraordinary ability of human intelligence, social interaction. When we socially interact with each other, it's as if we exchange our rules of parsing the world with each other. And in the process, we transform each other's way of looking at things. Together, we engage not just in a dialogue, but in a creative thinking process. 
in the end, it doesn't even matter whether we understood each other completely or not, as long as we succeeded in transforming our own ways of looking at the world. So the case that I'm making is that with just these two abilities, one, the ability to be cognitively diverse, and second, the ability to socially interact is what makes us creative society. However, we are spending less time embracing our diverse thoughts and ideas. We are spending less time problem solving with humans and more time with machines. And these machines are programmed to give us the exact same answer every single time we query it. So this got me thinking, can machines ever learn to be cognitively diverse? Can machines ever learn to give us different perspectives every single time we ask it? The challenge in making such algorithms is that creative thinking is neither strictly logical nor is it entirely random. Our thinking is so ephemeral. One moment we might look at something one way, another moment completely differently. It is as if we dynamically decompose our thoughts, fuse them, embed new meanings, and recreate new thoughts. It is as if the units of thoughts are evanescent in nature, and they serve the purpose of explaining the meaning only momentarily, and then disappear and reappear to make new meanings. This is because we do apply rules, but we are constantly changing rules to form new interpretations and then form new rules again. And making machines that can exhibit such kind of behavior is computationally challenging given the current frameworks of machine learning. It required using a different paradigm. A computational framework called Shape Grammar, conceptualized by George Steiny, a professor at MIT, provided a way for me to address this challenge. Using Shape Grammars, we can now build machines that can compute multiple perspectives. Consider an example of these three triangles. If I ask people what do they see, most will say three triangles. Some, however, would see two triangles. Some would see four triangles. Somebody like me would see nine lines. And the possibilities are endless. Our human mind is capable of incorporating all these different answers. Machines, on the other hand, are programmed algorithmically to give the exact same answer three triangles. But what if our frameworks were not so static and rigid? Shape Grammars provides us with a framework to compute all these multiple possibilities. This is because the machine computes with new set of rules and new components every single time we ask it. It can either have full, partial, or no memory of the previous state. So in short, using, using shape grammars, we can encompass all these indefinite possibilities and perspectives using a same simple mechanism. But here is the incredible part. This framework can be applied not just to compute with shapes and visual forms. In my research, I used the principles of shape grammar and applied it to creative thinking. Now imagine that instead of computing with shapes, the machine is now computing with abstract thoughts. And instead of making rules of placement of shapes, the machine is now making rules of placement of abstract thoughts. This meaningful arrangement of thoughts or spatial relations is nothing but ideas. So if thoughts were shapes, not literally, and ideas were spatial relations, then creative thinking can be computed using shape grammar. Using this framework, we can now build parser machines that can break complex ideas into simpler thoughts. We can build interpreter machines that can combine simpler thoughts and make complex ideas. Or we can make inference machines that can compute with multiple ideas and start connecting these thoughts and help us discover meanings which our human mind was incapable of discovering. In short, I'm saying we can build machines that can think. Might not think as logically, but can still think. And if these machines can learn to share their rules of parsing with us, they can become true creative partners. Instead of being passive interfaces, they can now actively start interacting with us to augment our creative abilities. My vision for the future of creativity is not where machines are more creative than us. 
but one where machines inspire each one of us to be more diverse in our thinking, more creative in our thinking. With access to vast knowledge and incredible computing power, machines can now provide us with different diverse perspectives as we bring in our diverse experiences to make the sense of the world. So let us build machines that can help us step outside our own fixed ways of thinking so that we can understand the world not in one way or 13 ways, but in definite ways. Because, like Minsky said, if we understood something one way, then we would not have understood it at all. Thank you.